Hi, and welcome to episode 14 of Understanding Darktable, Masks Part 2. I think this is probably going to be a three-parter uh, rather than a two-parter. Uh, tonight we're just going to look at parametric masks. Now I've got this image that I shot with model Tammy uh, earlier this year. She wanted to do a shoot with a car in a vineyard so uh, I got in touch with a vineyard that I'm a member with and uh, said hey can I bring a car and a model and come and shoot in the vineyards and they said yeah for sure. And so this was one of the images that we shot. Uh, this is pretty close to straight out of the camera as you can see from the history stack uh, I've just added a little bit of con that's pretty much it straight out of camera there a uh, bit of contrast a bit of white balance and that's pretty much it so we're just going to use this as our guinea pig image for this episode and again I'm going to use the monochrome module to demonstrate how the mask is working or is not working on the image so we will go to our parametric mask in the blend options for this particular module and straight away our entire image turns to monochrome and if we bring this down we can see that after our blend mode drop down list which we saw last week in the uh, drawn masks uh, module is the same the opacity slider is the same but after that it's all different what we've got are buttons for either the lightness channel the A channel which is the green and magenta channel of the or axis of your raw data the B channel which is the blue yellow axis of your raw data the chroma channel which is essentially picking up saturation if you like and the hue channel which will pick up on the various colors within the image we've then got an eyedropper we've got an invert the uh, polarity of channels option and we've got a reset blend mask settings option so if you've mucked around with it and you've totally confused yourself you can just hit that button to reset then we've got these two sets of sliders one for the output and one for the input now if you've ever worked with Photoshop and you've mucked around with the blend mode sliders for a particular layer you're probably familiar with this concept of these four triangles on the output slider and four triangles on the input slider. Essentially the way it works is that the two triangles on the top of the slider allow you to denote certain pixel values at which the mask is at 100% opacity and the two triangles on the bottom allow you to specify pixel values at which the mask should be at 0% opacity which is a bit of a mouthful and probably not particularly easy to understand but I will demonstrate it in a sec then we've got an option to combine masks we'll leave that until next week when we look at drawn and parametric masks together and then we've got our mask blur which we've already seen now we looked at this button in the last episode the display mask button and if I was to activate that now this entire image will go yellow like so because the monochrome module is working on every pixel in the image if we decided if we were to go back and have a look at the image again that maybe we only wanted to affect the foreground we want to leave the sky in color but we want to put everything else in the image into monochrome what we could do is go to the L channel for the lightness and we could create the mask so that it affected the sky and then we could reverse that mask so that it affected just the dark pixels which is pretty much all of the foreground so what we would do is we would activate this so that we can actually see which parts of the mask are active so we'll start with the input sliders now these four text values here 0 0 100 100 represent the pixel values of these four triangles and respectively they are the bottom left triangle the top left triangle the top right triangle and the bottom right triangle you'll see as we start bringing these in that those values change so this this triangle here now has a value of 9 this triangle here has a value of 90, 89, and double click 
resets them all. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to isolate just the sky. And the sky is fairly bright. So we would bring these triangles up. And as you can see, when they travel together, we get a very hard delineation between where the mask is active and where the mask is inactive. But by separating these triangles, we can soften the border between the pixels that are active and the pixels that are inactive. So we want to get as much of that as we can. And that's probably as good as we're going to get. Now, we're losing some of the sky in the corners where the sky is a bit darker. But we are also picking up parts of the image that we don't really want to pick up. In this case, Tammy's skin tones, some of the sky reflecting off the bonnet of the car. So this is probably a job for next week's episode where we will look at drawn and parametric masks together. But you get the idea. This allows us to sort of fine tune which pixels we want to pick up and which ones we don't. And then we can turn this off to see the effect. And as we quite rightly surmised at the outset, we've got the inverse of what we were after. We've actually made our sky monochrome and left all of the color information in the foreground. So what we would do is come up here to invert all channel polarities. And now we've got color back in our sky and mostly desaturated foreground. It's not perfect, I'll admit, but it's heading in that direction of what we were after. Like I said, in this particular instance, you would use a combination of drawn masks and parametric masks to achieve that result. But let's try some other examples. Let's suppose we just wanted to desaturate the car because we thought, hmm, you know what, that blue, it's just way too in your face and I can't see the girl. Uh, so <laughs> what we would do there is you might be tempted to go to the, the B channel where the blue and yellow is sitting in the image but in this instance you would actually be better off with the hue and aiming for the blue pixels and again we will turn on the mask visibility oh i think we're still inverted let's try that and what we can do is just narrow in on the blues that make up the car and we still want to pick up a little bit more. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. No, there they are. Wow, okay. That blue extends a long way up into the magentas in that uh, hue range. But anyway, uh, but if we now turn the mask off, we can see that that's done a pretty good job of removing most of the color from the car. Uh, our car is now essentially just shades of grey. Now if we decided that that was just a little bit too much, we could then use the opacity slider to bring back a little bit of the blue, but not too much of the blue. Right, so we can bring it down to 50 odd percent and there we go. The car is now blue, but it's not as intense as it was at the outset and we could just dial that up to wherever we felt we were comfortable with it, if that was what we wanted to do. I don't know why you would want to do that, but who knows. All right, so let's reset those and reset that to 100%. So we're now back to a completely monochrome image again. But just by contrast, let's see whether we could have selected the blue of the car by using the B color channel. Somehow I don't think it'll work as well. So we'll turn on the mask and we'll bring this down and we'll bring this one down and yeah, see it, it's picking up a lot of other stuff that is not the car. And I don't think, yeah, it's not going to do as good a job. And well, well, you could maybe argue that that's a reasonable job at picking up the blues yeah it's 
similar. I actually think the Hue slider did a better job of it, but you know, the beauty of Darktable is there are so many tools and so many ways of achieving similar results. So, you know, feel free to experiment with whatever works depending on the image that you're working on. All right, so let's suppose we just wanted to affect only the most saturated pixels within the image. What we could do is go to the chroma channel and again we'll turn on our mask visibility and we'll start bringing up this slider here and maybe we want to bring that back a bit so essentially that is now picking up the most saturated pixels within the whole image and we might want to bring in a little bit of a mask blur and then turn our mask visibility off so as you can see we've now got fairly muted tones uh, it looks pretty much like rubbish <laughs> It's not something I'd want to do to my image, but you at least should now have a, a bit of an understanding as to how you can use these various channels of the parametric masks to affect different parts of your image. And a lot of it's trial and error, uh, but certainly turning on the mask visibility so that you can see exactly which pixels are being affected will certainly go a long way to helping you to dial it into exactly what you're after. So I hope this has been helpful. I will confess, I don't know everything there is to know about these parametric masks. I'm still learning myself, but hopefully that's at least got you started with using parametric masks in Darktable. All right, talk to you next week.